Hello everyone and welcome back to my live streamed Hard Korea Adventures in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.2. This is an edited for YouTube version of my May 13th stream and since it was a live stream, the video bitrate is about a fifth of what I usually produce for YouTube videos, so apologies for that. Please do stop by on Twitch, I'm Tyler Ray's there as well. My current plan is to stream Saturdays and Sundays at 1pm Pacific, 8pm GMT, and Wednesdays at 4pm Pacific. 11 p.m. GMT, though if you would like to suggest other streaming times, I can be a bit more flexible during the summer. I generally stream for about two to three hours. Now on to my live commentary from May 13th. Alright, so I need to pick up some new contracts. We plan a flag we've done the plan of flag stuff nearby, so I'm not interested in that right now. And then there's this rescue of Kerbal. We keep getting these rescue of Kerbals, but actually exploring Ike sounds a lot more interesting. I'm gonna pick up Explore Ike. Maybe you should try that. Yeah, let's let's make Explore Ike our goal for this episode. And so I'm going to try and send a probe over to Ike, gonna land on Ike, and then transmit data from there. And that'll give us quite a lot of science if we can do that. Alright. So let me just remind myself about the state of our tech tree and then we'll be moving right along. Uh, we don't have the little tiny engines. Those would be really helpful for a probe. I guess we could unlock it now. I guess that's, a, that's the thing I want to unlock. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to research that and I especially want that engine. We could pretty much unlock you know, a fair chunk of this tier anyway. So, okay, I'm gonna unlock that. And since our lander is sort of... Well, let, let's wait until we get some more science before I unlock anything else. Well, uh, let's start off with the one that we used be before. It worked out pretty well. And we'll see what changes we need to make to it. So, this was a, let's say, Moon or Lander Pro because that's about the right size. And now we don't have part limits, so I can do this properly. The gravity of Ike is 1.112g, so less than that of the moon. That looks a lot better. And do we really need this heavy thing? Let's see. Uh, 0.18 tons. This is pretty heavy. I guess I could unlock this one, but would it be worthwhile now? I haven't done the calculation to see whether the LV-909 is where... There's, there's a certain mass where the LV-909 is more efficient than the little spark, but I'm, I'm assuming that this is not that massive right now. So I think I should go with the spark. This is a little bit too big for the ant. So that is the downside. Uh, when you think about an eighth of this mass, so let's say the mass is 1.3, that's about uh, 1.5. Well, this is max thrust 2. Be cutting it close though. Okay, this is going to be somewhat of an expensive probe, but we are planning to do a lot with it. All right, let me quickly calculate the delta V on this thing. 2,600. Okay, so 2,600. Okay. Well, that's as good as I can get. So yeah, uh, this probe is going to be trying to achieve orbit around Ike, transmitting or recovering data from space around Ike, and then landing on Ike. So what I would suppose is that, and we know about the air breaking situation, so that's not a problem. Um, I think this probe should have enough to do all of the, the real uh, the transfer and everything. All we need to do is get it into orbit. After that, it should be okay on its own. Somebody in the comments on the YouTube video suggested I should just use the BACC, two of them two of these guys. But they're more expensive. Well, no, that's entry cost. Well, I guess I'll unlock them. No, the thrust won't work out quite right though. Maybe. I sort of like this configuration though since 
uh, we've been using it so far, and we don't even need no scones since these guys will drop off pretty quickly. I sort of want to make a more robust. You know what? Let's let's do like well, liquid is more expensive though. Hmm. I really want to stop using these SRBs, but this has worked so far. We are going to try and transfer over to Ike, to Duna, and that's going to take a little bit of time. So this is career mode, and we're going to be doing our first interplanetary, uh, but we haven't unlocked... Yeah, we, we let's unlock the maneuver nodes. This has got to be too painful without them. I think we can manage the mission and get the funds necessary while paying for the maneuver node unlock. Okay, well, anyway, uh, let us see now. Well, yeah, we've got enough cash, so flight planning, we're going to go for it. We're a little bit tight now, but I think that should be enough to get an Ike mission underway and successful. So I will do this. Okay, SAS on, thrall is up. And here we go. And we don't need a center engine fully throttled right now, as usual. Okay, all looks nominal, and our probe is now balanced, right? Before it had the solar panel on one side, and that was creating drag. But now we don't have the panel on just one side, so hopefully we'll be able to keep in line with prograde exactly instead of uh, leaning to one side or another. Uh, hold on, don't get too excited here. Okay, ditch, and throttle up. So yeah, uh, just today I uploaded a, uh -oh, a little space shuttle video for the Sandbox series. And I'm quite happy with how that one turned out, but I'm not happy with how this is turning out. Hold on. Come on. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Stop that. Stop that. Stop. Stop. I sh knew I should have put the extra reaction wheel on, darn it. Okay, come on. Of course, people keep telling me to put fins, but and now now that I've uh, unlocked more parts than just 30, I probably should. But, you know, we've been doing it without fins so far. Okay, looks safe now. Okay. We continue on our first interplanetary journey, and I see maneuver node. We can create a maneuver node there. All right, so that's working. So we're pretty much all set. We've unlocked the VAB. We've got uh, so that we can do up to 255 parts. We've un of course unlocked the launch pad. We did that very early on, and uh, we can now create maneuver nodes. So. Yeah, pretty much all set for the bigger and better things in Kerbal Space Program. So again, if you're just joining, we are trying to send a probe over to Ike. This will be our first interplanetary mission in this career mode. So we just unlocked maneuver nodes, which are sort of essential for the whole interplanetary thing. At least I wouldn't like to mess around with it otherwise. Okay, so time to create a maneuver node. We should be in the right timing, right phase angle for a home and transfer, and I'll do it behind our craft because otherwise we won't have enough time to do it. That's too much, I know. Of course, could just wait a little while and I bet I'm just too early because I don't have like Kerbal Alarm Clock in here. Or something like that. Um, I'm not liking that. I think, yeah, I think I'll go for the whole hitting the descending node version instead. There we go, finally. All right. So, as people like to tell me, focus view. 
Well, honestly, it probably won't make too much of a difference. Uh, yeah, it's too touchy. I'll have to fix it after I do the burn. Okay, there's that stage. Funny, I uh, don't seem to be getting the same sound out of the end of the stage. But anyway, here we go. I must have miscalculated the delta V of this stage. Or at least it seems that way. Well... Yeah, I wonder if there's something wrong with my delta V calculation for this stage. Okay, that's getting better, better, worse. Oh, it's giving me that there's two possibilities here. Darn it, I hate when that happens. I'm trying to sneak this in. Duna's not making it easy. We didn't quite hit the right phase angle this time. It's it's not a sh it's a probe, right? It's just a little probe. It's not unlike what we sent to the moon or Minmus, except now we've got a lot more parts to work with, so it's got more solar panels and more batteries and everything. I think I'll leave it there. Okay, so we'll try that maneuver. But yeah, it's just a pointy little thing. It looks like this. Alright, so this is our probe. We've got a thermometer, a barometer, four goo tanks, and uh, four batteries and four solar panels. And this is going to attempt to land on Ike. Okay, so let's get out of the the Kerbin area. Well, that's a cute little thing. It's it's basically a nose cone, right? I mean, uh, the goal was to keep it streamlined so I wouldn't have to put a fairing on the thing. There's a hard mode, yeah. Uh, in career mode, uh, Martin, the there are choices for difficulty, and so there is a hard mode. This is a stock install right now, yes. There are a few difficulties and sliders to make custom difficulty settings, yeah. And of course I didn't want to do the custom difficulty settings because I wanted people to sort of know where I'm at without me uh, saying anything, right? Uh, so I, otherwise I would have to tell exactly what my settings were, so I had to use the, the general settings. Uh, is Time Warp still buggy? Time Warp is iffy. <laughs> I don't trust it. I don't, I mean of course I've, I've played so many versions of KSP, it's like I'm, I'm sort of trained not to trust it. And we're talking about where our, our encounters and maneuvers will change dramatically depending on whether we time warp through SOI changes, right? That's the bugginess that I'm referring to in particular. Wouldn't you expect binding, bending time to your will to be a bit wobbly? Nope. <laughs> Not in my experience. Anyway, um, what do you think Squad will add next? They add a lot in 1.0. Yeah, uh, well, from what they've been tweeting out, they're focusing on working on Unity 5, except for a hotfix. They've got a hotfix coming out, but then it's Unity 5 that they're working on. That's what they're focused on. And again, I'm... I'm cautiously optimistic about that and I insist on just being cautious. I, I don't want to have high expectation. Oh crud, our electric charge seemed to be wobbling. Uh, our panels should be consistently... yeah, this this orientation should be fine. Okay, well don't worry about that. Hopefully it'll be alright. So yeah, Unity 5 is the next big thing and maybe that will improve our ability to build big space stations. Uh, time work isn't trustworthy, has always been like that, sometimes it can break craft. Yep, there's that too. Does Unity 5 mean 64-bit? Uh, that, I mean, that depends on whether they can make it work. Uh, wh whether it's going to be stable or not. That's the part I'm not sure about trying to uh, hope for. Uh, there are other things that uh, Unity 5 will have benefit to. It can use more cores for the physics, I believe. And so that's why you won't get as much lag if you build a large space station, right? Because more cores on your computer can render the physics. So that's the main thing for Unity 5. But possibly 64-bit will be more stable as well. 
but it's hard to say. Okay, um, 1.0 is the official release, but it's still normal for uh, normal KSP for you. More updates to come. This doesn't seem finished yet. Well, you know, uh, this would be the first game ever that was finished on 1.0 if it was finished in 1.0. I mean, most of the time you have a very unfinished product in 1.0. Um, yeah, so this is a far more finished game than we've been getting with uh, developers when it comes to 1.0 releases at least in my experience I don't know how cautious I should be about air breaking around doing that actually I need to fix inclination if I'm gonna hit Ike let's say 24 let's say uh, 24 kilometers for the air break the stream needs space music yeah I was thinking about that we've got uh, the default music on very low oh shoot I was gonna go to settings sorry settings I mean I've got the default music down low. Let me turn it up. But the I I have been thinking about music, and I will work on that. After all, I'm I'm not concerned about the vods being muted since I'm gonna be editing and uploading to YouTube. Uh, the only key is that I can't use copyright music for the for anything because of YouTube, right? I mean. If I'm gonna upload to YouTube, then I need it to be nice and well. It's gonna be mostly Kevin McLeod, or uh, if I could cook up something. Okay, so let's see how air braking at 24 kilometers around Duna works out. We still haven't hit a very good number for Duna air brake. I'm hoping this thing has enough juice so that I can break it. Uh, it can do its own braking using its thrust. If it turns out that this doesn't work. Ike looks really close to Duna like this. Okay, here we go. Probably this is too high, that's my expectation, but uh, we know that 12 was too low, so we're just gonna see what happens. We can do a goo container here. In space near Duna. Okay, uh, well, we'll have to transmit that. Yep. This is not coming back to, to Kerbin. Okay, let's do some other experiments. Thermometer. And barometer. Read zero? We're in the atmosphere, sort of. Well, we'll wait until we're high over Duna for another goo container. Otherwise, I think let's just see how this is working out. Not much. Probably expected. But, but it is turning our orbit somewhat. Hey, there's an Ike encounter. We are attempting a very high aerobrake over Duna. 24 kilometers. And seeing if we can get into orbit with that. We've got an Ike encounter here. But that's not a good... Well... It could work, actually. We could uh, do an icon counter like this and just slow down our with uh, the engine. Uh, let's see. Still looks like it's curving us around. Might capture us. It might only capture us because of the icon counter. I think Ike is actually shooting us out, but now as we pass in front of it, it'll be bringing us in. This is the weirdest... No, no, it's shooting us out even... Oh, no, we're, we're curving like that, okay. That is... That is a minor lesson in, uh, in uh, orbital mechanics right there, just watching that orbit go around. Well, 24 kilometers worked to get us into orbit around Duna. So make notes, folks. Um, we were a little bit tilted away from retrograde. Uh, no overheating, obviously. Um, in fact, I would be surprised if we even got flame effects. Okay, let's uh, head over to Ike. 
Wolfram Alpha is also pretty good too, by the way. If you have a, a problem like that, you could probably uh, type in, you know, area equation for poly regular polygon into wolframalpha.com and that could work. You can't remember anything you learn in engineering mathematics. That was over seven years ago. It fades if you don't, yeah, it does fade if you don't use it on a daily basis. Um, okay, so observe mystery goo in space near Ike and then we'll, uh, we forgot to do high over Duna, darn it. Well, a little bit too late for that now. We'll, we'll see if, what we can do about that, but let's get it down one time first. Should have put lights on. Okay. Barometer. And I better watch electric charge. We're not charging up. It's dark. Okay. Yep. Uh, going into welding classes next year, so you'll need this. Yep. Geometry. Very important. Uh, had a six year gap between high school calculus and college calculus. Took a while to get it back up to speed. But you did learn it. Yeah, you learned it faster the second time, that's for sure. Math is easy, history is hard. Uh, well, yeah, remembering the stuff in history, uh, it takes a bit of organization skills. You have to be able to hang it all together somehow. That's the trick. Uh, if it's just a bunch of loose facts, it's impossible. You have to sort of systematize it by some means so that you can remember it all. And that was always my trick. Hard to teach it though. Hard to teach how to remember all these loose facts. You could try and teach the system, but really uh, different people have different ways of remembering things. And so it's generally hard to uh, sort of convey how to put it all together into a single big picture. And that's sort of what you need to do to make history meaningful. But don't worry, we'll have enough electric charge for this. We're good. Let's just make sure that we've done those two. And now we're landing on Ike and then transmitting science from the surface. That is our goal. And don't worry, as we go down, the solar panels will naturally become more and more bathed in the sun's light. Okay, it looks like we're good on our, our Delta V, so maybe we can land in one spot and then hop over to another spot. So I'm looking at maybe landing around here and then hopping over to this dark area here. Hopefully it's a different biome. Yeah, uh, definitely remind me to put the solar panels to, uh, facing the sun any time you think that I might need to be reminded of that because let's face it it's uh, better to be reminded than to end up with a vehicle that does not have any power so I I don't mind reminders at any time yep so this will be good this this contract uh, had a lot of funds to it we we already got like about 40, 40 or so thousand funds from these two bits and then uh, making the landing will get us a bunch more and then after that the total contract worth was like 300,000 so hopefully we'll be able to unlock something like especially the R&D building now with that because now we're getting to the point where we're at the limit where it doesn't allow us to unlock thing uh, technologies that require more than 100 science so we need to be able to unlock those not well I'd say need to, but actually, probably for the contracts that they're giving us, because our reputation is still pretty low, uh, for the contracts that they're giving us, probably we don't need too much more technology than what we've already got. I launched this on the same launcher that we've been using for the Moon and Minmus probes, so no big difference there. Actually, uh, you know, all the Dunas. Yeah, you know, basically all the Duna stuff and Eve stuff as far as probes go can be done with the same launcher that you use for the Moon and Minmus. Do I stream any other games? Not so far. 
I was thinking of streaming Elite Dangerous because that seems to be a game that's more fun streaming than trying to make videos out of it. Because I'm trying to do an intergalactic trek in Elite and uh, yeah, the thing is the video quality isn't all that great, at least streaming through my, my bandwidth. So, and Elite is sort of a, a visual sort of game, it's very beautiful and I was just a little bit worried that uh, it would mar the beauty to try and stream it with a low bitrate. Shadow, Shadow, where are you? Ah, uh, there you are. Okay, we are on Ike. Observe Mystery Goo. Okay, Lowlands, transmit data. Okay, thermometer reading. Transmit data. We're getting some serious science out of this one. And finally, barometer reading. Okay, so that's all we can do from here. And so we're trying to make this uh, dark patch here, and we'll see if that's a different biome. Uh, so let's go southeast. Let's get deep into that territory so that we're, we maximize our chances of being in a different biome. So this seemed like the juiciest contract, the whole Explore Ike, and we've, we've completed it. We've got 500,000 funds now, lots of science, and just uh, out of curiosity and for a little bit more science, trying this little spot out here. It's Ike, yep. It is Ike, the moon of Duna. This is our very first interplanetary probe in this save, if you will, in this career mode. This is hard career mode, so, oh, there's Duna. Yep. It does sort of look, look like a rising billiard ball, ball. I have the stock bug fixes in, Raven. So I am not playing without the stock bug fixes. I have them in except for the symmetry action fix. I do not have the symmetry action fix. Because I thought that was too moddy. I felt it was too much of a mod. Number 15, huh? Rising billiard ball. Well, it's a setting billiard ball now, which gives me an idea how high the land is right now. What does symmetry action fix do? Um, it did. It's uh, at least from the description of it on the bug, the stock bug fixes. It seems to do a lot of stuff. That's that's why I shied away from it. It also said that uh, there could be unintended unintended consequences, and that always makes me worry. It might take us a while to get down to the surface because I'm gonna have to be cautious. So I'm not going to uh, go down too quickly. You still look like you have 50 plus meters. I think I've got more than that. I mean... I can see some details on the ground. But again, they're sort of fractal. So I'm not too sure how big they are. Uh, I only... Oh, I think we've hit the surface. I think we bounced off of the surface. Seems obvious to you. Okay, uh, we bounced again. Stop bouncing, stop bouncing. Okay, let me catch up with what you guys have been saying. How do you get rid of Symmetry Action Fix? Yes, just delete the folder. Just to delete its folder, that's all. Okay, so a uh, south southeastern mountain range. Sounds good. New biome. Let's transmit data. Let my electric charge recharge a bit. Well, could do. It doesn't really matter. Or uh, do you want to hop to somewhere else? I think we, we're done with this mission. Yeah, I think we can do all our science with the charge that we've got. Okay, we're done with this. We've uh, used all the goo containers, and I don't think we have enough fuel to do another hop. Okay, I'm gonna jump back to the Space Center now. <laughs>